<laughs> hey kids, it's time for part two of the creepy tales of Camp Jeremiah Johnson on KW Judas. No! <laughs> just because we had nothing better to do. Yeah. That kind of actually leads me to another, I guess, paranormal story, yeah. actually. There was one, and two, since we're, we're going to lead into back into the Camp Jeremiah thing. Yeah. So, one time, Artie and I were actually walking the back streets of Lehigh. Late, late, late. It was probably like the sun was almost about to come up, you know, around like 5 a.m.-ish. Yeah, and he was gonna. Uh, I, I I walked him to his his house, walked him to the door, you know, yeah. and um, of course we just sat outside and bullshat for a good long while, even longer, and before he went inside. So over towards, um, almost kind of towards AF. Yeah, you know, you're looking that uh, eastward. Uh huh. He and I both. Just happened to be looking in the same direction already anyways. When out of fucking nowhere... Now, this is really hard to describe. Uh, it, it was... Almost like a slit. Like an eye shape, but vertical. Like, or like a cat's eye, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and it sort of like got bigger and smaller... And it was a kind of fluorescent green. And it was accompanied with this kind of noise. Yeah. It was like a fucking portal just opened up above the goddamn city. Oh, that's weird. I'm, yeah, I'm not shitting you. Like, the noise was, I don't know, it just it filled the whole sky. So and it was just for like a second and a half. Just... So you guys like were walking in that, and you felt no. We weren't walking. We were chilling on his porch. Oh, I see. So yeah, we were stationary, and we just happened to both kind of be talking and looking over that way, and we're both just like, "Did you see that?" Yeah, of course I did. You know, That's and it wasn't just see, but hear. What's, the noise was just yeah. as crazy as as what we saw. The it, entire uh, sky, or no, no, no. It, it was just like like in the distance. It, it looked like it was just above the city, mm -hmm. you know, and off in the distance, if I like, I don't know, measured with my fingers, it would still only have been maybe, a, I hate to say it, like use measurements, like an inch. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That's it didn't fill the whole it. sky, you know, yeah. it was, it was like maybe, I don't know, from the distance, I would guess 10 to 20 feet high. Mm-hmm. And maybe just like a two or three feet wide at the maximum width. But, I mean, how can I say that? It was clear the fuck above the, the, the city. That's crazy. And it's hard to tell how far away it was. And especially for the fact that it was only for like a second. Yeah. Um, and, it, yeah, the, the shade of green and the shape of the light, I would almost compare to, like, say the Xbox symbol. Okay. But only one slash. <laughs> And vertical. What do you feel like? It just went. Maybe it was like a UFO. I don't know, man. I mean, a, U, a UFO could mean any unidentified flying object. Yeah. This wasn't exactly flying. It, it like, just like it went. Like a wormhole opened. Or just something. appeared for a second, disappeared. It was totally stationary. It <laughs> was like something just got beamed down, or beamed up. Or that's, beamed through. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that is the only weird thing I've ever seen in the skies. Yeah. You know, as far as extraterrestrial or uh, UFO or anything like that. Oh, fuck. That'd be, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> it wasn't really terrifying. It was just, what the fuck was that? And then you just keep like, all right, well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you something to think about for the rest of the night. <laughs> I guess I'm going to walk home now with this thing lingering around. 
I might get sucked up into the sky, but whatever. I guess I better go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. My eyes were definitely on the sky for the rest of the walk home, for sure. <laughs> like, look behind you. Like, I'm walk home alone. <laughs> well, you're, your house is the opposite direction, so your back is towards it. You know? Yeah. And you're like, oh, yep. man. <laughs> and walk backwards the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be terrifying. Yeah. So, Artie and I... We're at that time very, very harsh into or hard into pursuit of the ghost hunting. So, so Artie got possessed as well. You were saying? Oh no, 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 oh. no! He wanted to go up and just kind of see the place, and he asked if the same friend who I was referring to by Jay in the last episode, uh, who was supposedly possessed would be willing to join us hopefully in hopes that well the same scenario could possibly be reenacted oh i see um and so it actually kind of was uh it didn't last as long but i don't know i did bring the journals (laughs) and i was kind of hoping to like start with the journals I haven't even read any of it since I found it. Um, You can read whatever you think would be interesting to read. But as as kind of a recap, so, you know, for anybody listening, if you don't really know what's going on, basically, uh, at this Camp Jeremiah, I witnessed what most folks would describe, especially at the time, me being a religious person, as a possession... Um, my friend essentially giving up her vessel to what appeared to be a seven-year-old little girl. What? Named Jenny. Oh, jeez, that's scary. (laughs) And so that was part of the last story. I don't remember the Jenny story. That's pretty. That's pretty shocking. <laughs> she came. Oh, okay, let's see. Because that is fucking scary to think about. Seven-year-old girl named Jenny. <laughs> okay, so she's standing up, crouching down, bent down halfway, always swaying back and forth, and doing the knuckle thing. She was wringing her knuckles. Uh huh. Always on the verge of tears. Um. My mommy had the baby, she said. Your mom had the baby? I asked. My mom had the baby. Did someone kill your parents? Or the baby? I don't know, she said. These people came. People? They look like my mommy and daddy. They walk around here. They told me to come with them. Are they mean? I asked. She shrugs and nods her head, no, still rocking back and forth and staring at the ground. I was, well, I wasn't scared. I was trying not to be scared. It wasn't some evil spirit. It was really a scared little girl who'd been lost one night when they were camping outside. I felt a lot of compassion towards her and spoke in a calm, soft, sympathetic voice just as I would to a seven-year-old girl who was lost and alone in the woods. Are they nice? I asked. She shrugged and nodded her head no again, still wringing her hands and rocking. My face was right next to hers. Because she spoke so softly and I wanted to get all I could as best I could. She said that these people talked to her. She heard them, but she didn't like they were talking through her head. She said they walked on the water like they had a boat, but they didn't have a boat. She also said before she was talking about them that they said she was too little to go by the water. Did you fall in, I asked? The same reply as Are you dead? What's your name? Are they nice? Are they mean? 
she just shrugged. Like well, those were the things she didn't want to say or didn't want to answer or was in denial of. Apparently, I'd already asked her if she was dead, and of course she didn't. Wow. Or if she was screwing with us, she couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think she was screwing with us, but it goes on to say... Uh, if she was screwing with us, she did a really good job. <laughs> I remember before she started doing the little seven-year-old girl thing, and she was walking around like a paranoid schizophrenic, right? I said, dude, there is definitely something up with this waterfront. And I'm freaking annoyed. At Let's see. Yeah, as I'm about to retort... Man, this isn't making any sense. Say so. For a second, Julie seemed with it and spoke in her normal voice. She was coming in and out of it? And I said, I, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. And she said, why not? Like she was angry with you? <laughs> I just kind of glared and I... <laughs> at her and said because it would piss you guys off we stare at each other a bit and she turns around we both approach her and she turns her head toward me just glaring and it seemed like she was looking me in the eye rather than backing down from this little spirit I stared right back with that dark look I do that so many people don't like staring it down with feeling like I'm sorry this is written really badly <laughs> okay, but yeah, a lot of this is written <laughs> like almost illegibly. But it's crazy to think that like she was possessed by like this seven-year-old girl's spirit. What a scary thing to have happen. Okay, so it says back to we actually never established a positive gender. But boys generally don't use words and talk and behave like she was, so we assume it was a girl. I asked where she was from, and she took a while and said, In Provo, they were visiting her grandma. Never said where she was from, though. Rye also asked if she knew Jay, the girl whose body she was supposedly inside of. She kind of perked up and repeats her own name, which I am still trying to keep anonymous here. That's why a couple of these audio clips are patched in, because I kind of messed up and said her name. So she perks up and says her own name, and I say her first and last name. And then she says, is she the girl you're looking for? And in a way, we were looking for her, so I just said yes. We don't know what happened to her, and we're really scared that she might be in trouble or in danger, and we really care about her a lot. Then she said something I'll never forget. Maybe they took her. Oh. I'm kind of getting chills as I read some of this shit, dude. <laughs> just fucking saying. Okay, that thought filled me with dread. We're screwed, I thought. We might have just lost her forever. Because even though we're not, like, together or anything, well, I still liked her. <laughs> well, I don't think she said much more, but I asked if she wanted to come walking with us. We'll just go around and see if we can find anything. See if we can help you out. Okay, she said, meekly. I put my arm around her and she put hers tightly around me she really started to seem more comfortable and more secure as we walked down the path toward the parking lot just as i again asked where she was from she went limp and i caught her going down to the ground with her she felt like a sack of bricks i don't know how she landed on her back it was probably the way i caught her i just knew i had to get my arms under her before she hit the ground under her head 
So we're both sitting here repeating her name. Are you there? Can you hear us? I pull up her eyelid and her eyes rolled back. Oh, man. Ryan's got the light in her face and she has the most sinister, psychotic little Joker's grin on her face. And she's mouthing out something. Looked like one word over and over again. Looked like it had a W in it. I stick my ear right over her mouth to see if I could get it or to see if she was even breathing because it uh, sure didn't look like it. And she started spazzing out and twitching again and breathing really fast and really deep, just like when she first freaked out before all this. And the look in her eye was normal again. She wakes up on the ground, big bright light in her face. Where, where are we? We're still at camp, I say. We're, where, we're at Camp Jeremiah Johnson. As if she'd blacked out the past four hours. She stands up and I point down there. That's the waterfront. She really didn't seem as confused as you'd think she would have been. So we're feeling good now that that's over, all strolling down the path like she was just kind of messing with us the whole time, but still not sure. She said she had no idea what was going on. Uh, Ryle did this lie test and said she was telling the truth. I don't remember what the lie test was. Uh, we went into the van and excitedly explained all we could throw at her in no real order. <laughs> she was probably even more confused. But then we mentioned the mommy had the baby thing when it hit me, the woman with the baby. This was an, a different incident that she said she uh, saw a woman holding a baby up by oh, yeah, the... Yeah. Um, the front gate. I think I might have mentioned that. Yeah, I remembered that, yeah. So when I said that, we were all smacked with the shivers, and uh, when you get them, that's how you know it's serious business. So me, it all seemed too real, and it made too much sense to not buy it. I must admit, there's still that shadow of a doubt that she was screwing with us, but I doubt it. And then, yeah... The next page is the second night when Artie was with us. Oh, wow. This is only one page, but I'll read it. So the first incident happened clear before I went to the boys' ranch. You know, it happened long before I ever met Artie, and it was when my first band, Belly Button Lint, was still active, actually. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, this is... Probably uh, not quite two years in between. Between a year and two years between incidents. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to have time to get kicked out of belly button lint <laughs> and <laughs> get sent to the boys' ranch and graduate from the boys' ranch. That took, you know, a little over six months. And then get out of the boys' ranch and then become this worthless shell of a human being who didn't know who I was. And then meet Artie. So, yeah, you know, roughly around um, between a year, a year and a half-ish, um, that this next incident occurred. Okay. Uh, so this is when Artie finally talked Jay and I into going back up there. And unfortunately, after this happened, her mom forebode her from ever seeing me again. Oh, really? And I haven't. Oh, wow. So this was actually not only um, the last real, not, I'm going to say the last chapter of this whole saga, because there has been one last thing more recently that I don't think I told you about that we can maybe get into after this. Um, but it was also the last time I ever saw her. Yeah. So... Um, here we go. It happened again. Jay and Artie and I went back up to camp last night. And of course, we 
head up to the waterfront to tell Artie of the last episode. You know, that's kind of the hot spot. Yeah. Not all the crazy shit happened there, but most of the craziest shit happened. So anyway, um, I never even got to finish... Julie fell into the same trance as before. I could almost anticipate some of the things she said. She was only gone for a minute or two until she started getting terrified. Because <laughs> if you remember, uh, what I just read, I didn't read the beginning of how it started, but you remember how it started. Like, she was telling the story she would slowly like her her words would slow down until a point where she wasn't even talking anymore and uh-huh. then you know just like it was like wham just like her eyes roll back and she falls back on her head on her back and um and yeah that's kind of where whatever whatever it is is making the first impact I guess I don't know how else to describe it Uh, so it it pretty much happened the same way as the first time but it wasn't as like prolonged right you know what I mean it was a little quicker probably because both entities involved had been through this before (laughs) right um so she starts breathing really hard in and out a voice shaky and horrified as hell. She, in a loud whisper, she asks, Can you see them? That's fucking terrifying. Before this, she had asked, Did she show them to you? Jesus. Show what? I asked. The claw marks she was supposed to show you. Claw marks? Dude. Fuck me. Fuck me too, man. I haven't read this since I, like, I'm, like, I'm getting some serious chills here, man. Like, claw marks and shit. What the fuck? Okay. I ask her where. She says, on the ground. That's when she started getting scared. Her fear grew with each breath she drew until it finally reached the raging climax of terror. She screamed. I doubt I'll ever forget that scream. Prior to the climax, she shuddered out uh, statements about them coming out of the water. Dude. Yeah, she was scared. Not saying I wasn't. When she shrieked and jumped, she knocked me down. So once again, I broke her fall, and it kind of (laughs) hurt. I got hurt several times, but that didn't phase me. That what hurt was watching? I've never seen someone in such anguish. It was almost the same as before she started looking for something on the ground. We, it was like we didn't exist. She kept crying. She kept whimpering. It's different. It didn't hurt this bad last time. She's fighting too hard. She doesn't want it to happen again. She screams, I don't know either. And continues crying out in pain. I did pretty much the same thing as last time. I stayed close to comfort her, tried to calm her down and care for her as best I could. But she is so vulnerable and writhing in agony. It was killing me. I wanted to put my arms around her and tell her it would be okay. But it wouldn't last long. I'd get her a little settled for a while. Then she'd have another burst of pain. So I just made sure she didn't fall into the water hole and watched her head for her when she'd fall. 
and just do what I could because I couldn't I couldn't hear or see things get any worse she said they both want to come in I asked who she says Jamie so this is when we finally found out her name Okay. I thought we got the name on the first one, but no, we got the name on the second. That was about the only info we got. She finally makes it into the bridge frantically and collapses and almost fell off into the water screaming, Shit, Glenn! Shit, Glenn! Get me off the bridge! Please, we... You know, and we get off the bridge. She faints in my arms and came back to life very shortly after. Jesus. That's terrifying. I've never heard her swear either. Again, this is back when we were like real, really Mormon, and so yeah. I, I, you know, like I feel like almost falling off the bridge kind of like snapped her out of it. Like she remembered my name and she swore, you know, uh, to a Mormon kid. It's like, oh, wow, you said shit. <laughs> wow. Um, and then yeah, like we get off the bridge and she just passed the fuck out. So obviously, the second time. Um, we still got something out of her, but uh, it was way more painful, way less cooperative, I guess. Right. And didn't last as long. It's still so terrifying. Dude, going back and reading that, I got to admit, like, I told you on the last time I was here that I remembered she said some pretty freaky stuff. Yeah. And now going back and reading it, it's just like, oh my God. She says some super creepy shit. Yeah. Like claw marks. Yeah. yeah. And and it just gets your brain spinning in so many different, like, what if directions. Yeah, totally. You know, combined with all the other stuff. So, to wrap things up, because I do got to get going. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the, the most recent thing. I don't think I told you about this last time. Mm. So... All this stuff happened clear back. Oh, I had to, you know, like 1999 to about 2001 ish. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, like we hadn't really been, um, I hadn't really talked to most of these people in quite some time. You know, we all go our separate ways. Like I said, I wasn't even allowed to see Jay after this. Uh-huh. Um,. You know, Artie and I kind of went our separate ways. Um, anyways, years and years later, probably like 2016-ish. Uh-huh. So like 15 years later, approximately. I actually rented out Camp Jeremiah for just all my friends that we had a concert. You know, nice. we had a touring band that was playing. Uh, they just happened to need a gig on Labor Day weekend. I, I rented it for the whole Labor Day weekend and just invited everybody. So, um, by now, I'm pretty, like, over these incidents. And, uh, you know, like, hadn't read this yeah. in 15 fucking years. You yeah, haven't really thought about it. Now again, yeah, this has just got my gears turning all over again. Just reading that shit. But anyways, even though, yeah, I had I told the stories then since, and I had still thought about it and still had some weird dreams about it, um, I'm no longer a religious person, and I also had remembered telling this to another friend who wasn't, and he, for the first time, tried to explain things from a little more, hey, maybe it was a seizure. A lot of people have do, uh, crazy things happen to them while they're on seizures, and seizures are still hard to explain how they even occur. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I really appreciate that you finally, somebody finally comes up with a logical explanation for any of this, but it doesn't explain any of the other stuff that has happened up there. Yeah. And it's also kind of weird that this seizure would happen to the same person at the same place. Yeah. You know, in the, in the same context. And I'm not entirely positive, but I'm pretty sure that my cousin went up there because she heard about some crazy stuff and she had a similar experience. Right. Where I think she was the, the, I don't know what you want to call the it. The essay. essay. Yeah, um, yeah. The medium. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I'd have to talk to her more about that, but yeah, I don't really talk to her anymore either. So my sister, who 
was a little too young at the time. Because I got, like, several sisters. I got, like, fucking ten of them. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you know Tirza. Yeah. So, there's Elizabeth and there's Amanda. And Amanda's the one that came up with us. And she also kind of lives a little bit of the alternative lifestyle, as do me and Tirza and Jacob. And so, um, she was the only one in the family that came up. Uh-huh. And late that night, she comes up to me and she's just like, so, what happened up here? And I'm just like, what do you know about what happened? Why are you asking me this? Like, Uh what makes you ask? And she's just like, well, I don't know. When we were kids, I remember you guys were teenagers and you were off doing all this crazy shit. Like, the last couple years that we were coming up here as kids. And, you you know, I asked Tirsa about it. And she, for one thing, said you would be the one to ask. And But Tirsa has also had her own experience or two up yeah. there as well. Because, of course, I start telling them about it and everybody wants to go up and have their own little experience they want to make fun. or yeah, whatever. Yeah, Jacob did the same, you know, like he wanted yeah. to go up and check out the place. Everybody, Artie, you know. And I tell them about this. Most people are like, dude, let's go check it out. Just like I would. Yeah, seriously. And so... Yeah, um, I don't. I want to get into the incident with Tirsa because again, it's hard to really remember the details about that. But as I said, she was trying to tell Amanda her story, uh-huh. and at least I believe that's what she was trying to tell her. And they're driving. I think they're driving up to Salt Lake. Tirsa's driving. Amanda's in the passenger seat, and in the middle of Tirsa trying to explain what happened up there her fucking eyes roll back oh jesus and she has a seizure in the middle of driving your sister does tirsa oh, God. while she's driving oh no while she's trying to explain what happened at camp her fucking eyes roll back and she has a seizure oh, God. and amanda has to like grab the wheel and guide him to safety and shit jesus that's terrible and tirsa does not have seizures dude As she's never right. had them before never had them after that's that is scary, dude. <laughs> so here I am, fifteen years later, thinking that oh, maybe it was a seizure. You know what I mean? But like I've kind of like put this behind me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Amanda just has to come up and open this fucking can of worms right the fuck back up again, fifteen years later, and I am at the camp. Yeah. And then she, like, in the middle of me, I'm just like, oh, wow, holy fuck. And, and like, I'm like, okay, all right. That's terrifying. That's bizarre. That, that just, like, all these things that I have buried, not only did you just totally dig back up, but it's something that I guess I have logicked my way out of this and logic just left again. <laughs> like, there's no more. And, and like, this almost supernatural unexplicable i hate to say the word entity but it's like it it just fucking hit me like the beginning of it you know like how there's two discs to it yeah the first it yeah and the first one they're kids and the second one they're adults yeah that's how it felt for you yeah, like Jesus. at the beginning of the of the second one where they're all adults and they find out that it is still alive yeah yeah, dude. It was just kind of like, oh my fucking god, this thing that I have like completely told myself, not that it didn't happen, but that it's logical now, it's back. Jesus. And it's real. That's scary. And again, like, okay, my friend who said that it was seizures, this time it was a seizure. And Again, explain that, you know? It's so fucking crazy. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> fucking fucked with me, man. I wasn't normal for the rest of the night. I was not okay. You know, I fucking, like, I was having a great time. All my friends, first time I ran out Camp Jeremiah, and she has to come up and pop that on me. <laughs> and so I spent the rest of the night just wandering around camp in the dark, just like... Who the fuck am I? <laughs> you know, just like questioning reality. Like that birthday is now ruined. <laughs> My friend like runs into me like, dude, are you okay? I'm like, fuck no. 
<laughs> I am not okay. I I have not been this not okay on this level of not okay since I was like fucking seventeen. <laughs> I feel like I'm seventeen again. <laughs> That's awesome. It was, yeah. It's just like getting a fucking scar just completely reopened, man. And it's still open. Ugh. Sure, this happened again like, you know, five plus years ago, but there's been absolutely no resolution then since. That's true. So it still just leaves yet another fucking question mark hanging in the air of a whole closet of question marks. None of which, you know, helps resolve any of the other ones. It just leaves more fucking holes that you're just like, I want to know more. Yeah. Yet, I don't want this to keep going. Yet, I do. <laughs> Yet, at the same time, it's it's fucked up. That is a fuck, man. <laughs> and I feel like it's almost got me. You know, like it's part of me or I'm part of it or something because there's something that still just keeps calling me back. There's that in this place. That that connection there. Right. And I feel a sense of not like familiarity from me when I get there. I feel a sense of familiarity towards me Uh when I get there. I feel like I am recognized. Yeah. Not like like I am recognizing a presence. It's like like a presence is recognizing me. Glenn's here, so let's fuck with him. Not even let's fuck with them. It's like, oh, you're back. <laughs> All right. We have much to show you, my son. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? And I'm like, no, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know if I believe in this shit. Remember, I'm not, I'm not a religious person. And they're like, you don't have to be. And I'm yeah. like, oh, damn it. But I exist. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been waiting for you. <laughs> we, it's only been at least only 30 minutes since the last time in our time frame. It hasn't been years, but it looks like it's time is caught up with you <laughs> yeah i don't think our time frames like match up or anything no sometimes of course you just postulate because that's all you can do yeah you're like what if it's like i don't know a certain maybe there's certain days on the calendar or something that this you know like you try to that definitely. marks the incident some fucked up thing that's- happened or maybe it's, you know, like you yeah. just fucking just sit and postulate all day. Maybe it only works with females. Maybe they're the only ones that can channel the, you know, maybe the, the ghost or whatever, the spirit. Um, We don't know enough. And that's what makes me like want to keep going. But of course, me just going up there doesn't do anything. I've gone up there plenty of times just by myself. Yeah, I'll go up there just to go fishing. And it's just me hanging out and as i say i feel acknowledged by a presence but it's not even like a scary anymore i'll go up there to me i think it'd be interesting to go see what it's like are you a medium um i feel like i can like feel you... things like I, think <laughs> I can like i feel like i don't think i'm a, i feel like I, I can sense things in a sense i don't know see we would need you me and like some vulnerable you know, female. I hate to say it, but <laughs> I'm not trying to be like misogynistic. But it seems Maybe. like ghosts are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, right, I'm just making it. an observation here. All right, all right. The girls there. You know, you got the you know the weird guy feeling sometimes, and then the guy Glenn. All right, okay. They're all here, guys. It's good. Let's get to work. <laughs> I think that it does. It you know the pattern at least is me, one other dude who's like, what the fuck? Which would be you this time? Yeah. You'll be Artie. Yeah, I'll be And right. then I just got to get in contact with uh, this chick that I haven't seen in like 20 years. Yeah. That'd be crazy. <laughs> right. That would probably be terrified if I <laughs> actually hunted her down. Like, no! No, we're not doing that. I fucking. Like I actually made up that thing about my mom telling me I can't see you. Yeah, that was just me. Was me. <laughs> I didn't want to see you me. after that. I was done hanging out. And I was just pretending to be haunted because I knew that it fucking it scared you. And then when you like. Brought your friend and started treating me like some sort of an attraction. I had to put an end to this. <laughs> I didn't want you to just keep hitting me up anytime you told one of your friends about Camp Jeremiah. <laughs> Bring your sister. <laughs> I was actually just going to say that. She's probably the closest thing we're going to get to a medium, but she lives clear the fucking Oregon now. Oh, she does? Okay. Maybe. And she's also, I'm pretty sure, said she would never go back there at night. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll see. Word. Oh, sweet man. That was fun. Yeah. Indeed. 
This is where instead of our regular word from our sponsor, I'm going to install another Urbex video featuring Wendell T. Wallaby, everyone's favorite hero. Uh, unfortunately, once again, I don't think there's anything creepy in the background of this one. You can go ahead and look for yourself. Let me know if you find anything. I myself couldn't. As I've kind of stated, it has been difficult to get anything over the last 20 years since these happenings have occurred. This is also where, if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify or anywhere besides YouTube, you won't be able to see the video. But if you look up Dregs Productions on YouTube, you'll be able to find that video and many others like it. So, thank you all for listening so much, and have a pleasant evening.